Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Justin and I test solar equipment. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a full on load test on the Fortress Power Envy 12K inverter because I'm starting to get concerned on the 50 amp breaker with the temperature of that. So the first thing we need to do is to remove the front cover so we can see the actual inverter. And before we get started, I wanna emphasize one point because in this video, you're gonna see me talking about a transfer switch and even showing you the transfer switch throughout the entire video, but that does not limit this to a 50 amp transfer switch. That's because I'm a test center and I use a transfer switch to be able to quickly connect these systems and test them out. This does have the ability for a 200 amp bypass. So you can connect your main wires coming in to this and then those wires going into your 200 amp service. So this can act as a bypass. That's very important because if you're gonna use this as a back feed into the grid, there's so many different configurations that you can use this for. And that would take a whole video to explain them but you can use this off grid, on grid, solar only. There's a lot of different configurations, but just know that you're not limited to what I'm showing you today. And this inverter is capable of 12,000 watts of output. And I'm gonna be testing as close as possible to that. And the reason I say close as possible is because we have it running into a 50 amp transfer switch that does load uh, or service hot water heater, a 240 volt mini split, another 120 mini split, a bunch of lights and plugs. But being that this is only 50 amps, and if we push that to 12,000 uh, of output, then we may trip that 50 amp breaker. This is 9.6 kilowatt hours of capacity and 9.6 kilowatt hours of capacity with an e-way and i have a video already put out on the pros and cons of this and i think you should probably check that out after this video so if you're interested in that i'll leave it at the end of the video and in the description below to a link to that but this e-way is very unique and i love how the batteries stack on top of one another for a seamless install however today's video is going to be on the inverter and its output and what it's capable of and if you are interested in the a Fortress NV12K inverter or this battery stack. I'll have links in the description below so you can check those out and save some money. And I did pick a very cloudy day to do this on because I do not want to subsidize any of the power coming in with solar. I want it all to be coming from the batteries. And to make sure that we have no solar power, we're going to turn this off. And this disconnect, turn it off. And this disconnect, turn it off. And now that we have that out of the way, Let's turn on some of the most energy consuming systems that I have in my studio here. I have a hot water heater that should be pushing somewhere close to 5,000 watts. We have that mini split that's 240 volts that should be pushing close to 1,500 or 2,000 watts. We have the other mini split. And then I got some tricks up my sleeve to push it over top of that 10,000 watts. And I may go up to 12,000 watts if I start feeling confident, but I'm pretty sure that I may trip the main breaker that's in my 50 amp transfer switch. And that wouldn't be any fault to the inverter itself. That would be fault to me for not putting a large enough transfer switch in here to handle everything turned on at one time. However, that's the way that this is designed and it should operate. If you start to overload this breaker, uh, you will trip the main if you go over the 50 amps for a certain amount of time. Okay, so we're gonna start out with around 82, 83% state of charge on the batteries. We're gonna put this through a rigorous load test. And the first thing that I wanna turn on is the 240 volt mini split onto heat mode and turbo mode so it will consume the most amount of energy possible. And next I'll do the same thing with the 12,000 BTU. This is 120 volts, but it still uses a decent amount of power. So let's get that turned on. And I've set that to 89 degrees. So it shouldn't turn off during this test. I do have this large television in my studio uh, just for entertainment purposes, but it does consume a good amount of energy. So that's our next item that we need to turn on. Let's go ahead and go over here to live TV. I'll keep the volume down so it doesn't disrupt the video, but we'll let that play for a while. Next, I want to engage the hot water heater that we have here in the bathroom in the office. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to turn the hot water on until we drain it enough that the hot water heater engages. 
I also have this old refrigerator out here that I just got water and some soda in for when people come in. I can offer them water or when I get thirsty, grab some water. But it don't only have a refrigerator, it does have a freezer that obviously I don't use, but this does consume some power. And I should note that I am powering 25 lights in my main section, four more lights in the bathroom, and seven more lights in the office with the ceiling fan turned on, with the light turned on, that's on high as well. And this nice little microwave that I use to heat up my food or my coffee when it gets cold. That's gonna get that coffee really hot. We have it running right at 12,000 watts. I'm gonna run it for a bit. I don't know how long I can keep that microwave on, but we're pushing right at the max. And this is a very good stress test on this inverter. So hopefully you guys find it helpful because I'm not sure if we're gonna run into any problems and I hope I don't. Uh, I'm pretty confident with this system so far. Everything that I've tested out on it has performed excellent. But you'll hear that we got a little bit of fan noise only when you start reaching up above that six or 8,000 watts of output do those fans kick on. This is usually very silent and you have no sound whatsoever, but when you start putting it under an extreme low like I have it right now, then you have the fans kick on, but they're still not extremely loud. And I just seen it go to 12.1 kilowatts of output. Wow, it actually overproduced and that didn't trip, so I'm good with that. But I am a little concerned, glad that it came back off of that just a tad because I'm running this as pretty much an extreme test and I don't want to overdo my wiring going into my transfer switch, but it certainly did reach that 12,000 uh, watts of output and I'm running it right around that 11.8 for a consistent amount of time. And I've got to back off my testing just a little bit because I'm starting to get concerned on the 50 amp breaker with the temperature of that. I'm seeing right at 150 Fahrenheit, so 146 Fahrenheit on that breaker, and that's concerning to me. So I'm gonna bring this back off just a little bit and uh, continue the testing. And on one single inverter, you can protect your food supply, keep your house warm, leave the entertainment on, keep the lights turned on, and even have the luxury of having hot water. And the MV12K is not a gimmick. This is the real deal. I mean, this thing was putting out 12,100 watts at one point and we didn't have any problem with it whatsoever. Now that just peaked up there for a very little amount of time and come back off and ran um, constantly at 11.8 kilowatts. So we were testing the true 12K on this on output for over 25 minutes, then I started to get concerned because my breaker started uh, to overheat, I think, because once it goes over 140, I start to get a little concerned and I wasn't really gonna push it. It was not worth it to me to try to catch a fire in my load center. So I pulled back off of that and ran this for a total of 45 minutes at a good discharge rate. And we discharged the batteries over 35%. So we did a pretty uh, substantial test on this and everything passed and I'm extremely happy with the results. And if this type of content is your thing, you might wanna consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Tap that little notification bell so when I put out videos, you get notified. I got all kinds of new videos coming up that I'm so excited to share with you all. I just can't talk about them just yet, but I think you're gonna really find them interesting. If you're into ESS systems, whole home uh, energy backup systems, then I have that on the channel. I got portable power stations, even installing full home solar systems, micro inverters, portable power stations, uh, rocking systems, anything that you can think of that's related to solar, I do my very best to cover those for you and bring you the results. So hopefully I'll catch you in my next one.